say, I never would have made it without the Lord. Come on, somebody bless him. Somebody just lift up your voice and tell him thank you right now. Lord, I never would have made it. I'd have never made it without you. You, God, have been the strength of my life. Woo! Y'all, I am so grateful. You know, it is good to be grateful because God blesses grateful people. And I'm going to tell you something. He will look out for grateful people. I said he'll look out. You can't kill a grateful person because God will look out for you and he'll bless you. I don't care who don't want you to be blessed. I don't care who don't like it that you're blessed. If you are grateful, God will bless your life. I want you to turn around and hug somebody and tell them, I am grateful. I am grateful to be here. Tell them I'm too grateful to be hateful. Tell them I'm too grateful. God has been too good for me, for me to sit up here and try to be hateful tonight. I am too grateful. I'm just grateful to still be standing. How about y'all? And I'm not standing because I'm good at standing. I'm standing because he's good at holding me up and I thank him. Woo! I am so blessed tonight to be alive, to be here, to be at the potter's house, to be in my father's house. And I am so appreciative today for the glory that is in this place, for the anointing that is here, for the expectation that is in the atmosphere. I am telling you tonight, something is getting ready to happen. I said, something's getting ready to happen in here. I'm telling you, it's getting ready to happen. And when Bishop was saying, get ready, get ready, get ready, get, 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 get ready, I'm telling you, that was prophetic. So if you don't get, woe be under you if you don't get ready. I said, woe be under you if you don't get ready. I believe there's an impartation that's about to hit this room tonight and somebody will never be the same again. I want to know, is anybody expecting anything? Well, why don't you praise him like you want it? Praise him like you want it. Lord, I want it. I need it. I got to have it. Hey. Come on and give God a great big thank you for our leader, our bishop. The man of God that spoke to our lives and loosed us and set us free. We love him tonight. I thank God for him. He is a father to me and I'm grateful. You need a father. I said, you need a father. I know you got a ministry, but you need a father because there's too many people that are suffering from the fatalities of fatherlessness today. And that's the trick of the enemy. He wants to separate the heart of the, the fathers from the sons. Because when you separate fathers from sons, what, that, what, what happens is you lose inheritances along the way. And when, when the father is not connected with the son, then that inheritance gets lost. And so every generation has to start all on the same level. Every generation has to start over and over again. But when you have an inheritance, that means you have the ability to just pick up where they left off. I don't know about y'all, I'm ready to just pick up. That's why Elisha worked, he, that's why Elisha got a double portion. Elisha started on the same level that his, that his mentor left off on. It was at the Jordan. Elisha started on the same level. Why? Because he was a son. Hit somebody around you and tell them, I'm a son, I'm a son. I know I'm a lady, but I'm a son. And it pays to be connected. Every unexplainable blessing I got in my life, I attribute it back to the spiritual father that the Lord gave me nearly 18 years ago. And I am walking into my purpose while I'm walking as a son. I said I'm walking into my purpose while I'm walking as a son. And I am grateful. And what can we say about the woman that stands beside him? There is none like her. None, absolutely none. None like her. And I am so grateful tonight. I'm glad to have my husband in the house, baby. Wave at everybody. 
That's the joy of my life. He still makes me laugh after 32 years. Ain't that awesome, y'all? I said, after 32 years, I ain't gonna tell you he ain't never made me cry because he's made me cry sometimes. But anyway, you know, I thank God for Jesus. The times he made me cry, I just told Bishop Jakes on him, hey! No, I have an awesome husband, and I'm grateful. Got my three daughters in here tonight, loving, serving, praising God. My sister and my niece, I'm just glad to have some of my church folk. I'm just glad to be here. Are y'all glad? Yeah. I said, are you glad? Yeah. Woo! Take your Bibles. Remain standing for a moment. Take your Bibles first to Luke chapter 13 for just one verse of Scripture. Somebody said, oh, no, she did not. Yes, I did. <laughs> Luke chapter 13. Put your finger in Ephesians 1 because we're going to go. We're going to go there. But just give me some keyboard and the monitors, if you will. Luke chapter 13. If your neighbor doesn't have a Bible, look at him and say, what in the world's wrong with you? <laughs> Tell him, girl, you know you need a Bible. <laughs> to all of the other ministry guests, I honor you tonight, and I'm grateful to be in this place. Y'all are saying more than I said, say. Luke chapter 13. Let's just read verse number 12. Mm. Your presence, Lord, feel this place. As your glory come on in, feel, feel this place. <laughs> oh, I thank you for what I feel. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. You know, he can come in anytime he wants, any way that he wants. I felt him sweep in here just then. Hallelujah. If you praise him, he'll see about you. Does anybody need the Lord to see about in you? Why don't you reach for him? My first job is a worshiper. Feel this way. Luke chapter 13, beginning at the 12th verse. And when Jesus saw her, ooh, that blesses me right there. The very fact out of, every, out of everybody in the room, he knows where I am. Ooh. And can I tell you, the same God that knew where she was knows exactly where you are. Isn't it good to know that he knows right where you are? Mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, he knows. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him. Tell somebody, that's worship. And he said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Ephesians 1 and 9, real quickly. Ephesians 1 and 9. Mm. Ephesians 1 and 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself having 
made known unto us. Look at your neighbor and just say neighbor. There are sovereign secrets that God wants to tell you. Just touch somebody else and tell them sovereign secrets. They're sovereign. They're sovereign. Sovereign secrets. Ooh, they're all in the room tonight. Just sovereign secrets. Just secrets. Just God talking in your ear, talking in your spirit. Having made known unto the mystery. They're, they're secrets. They're sovereign. Spirit of the living God, I love you tonight and I thank you for all that you've brought us through and all that you're taking us to. I thank you for this very moment because I feel like we've pulled our chair up to your table and you are getting ready to feed us. Lord, will you talk in this place tonight and Will you heal every woman, every man? Will you find every person that don't even want to be found? Oh, I know what it's like to not even want to be found. But you said you sent your word and your word healed us. So tonight, God, I, I thank you for your word and I thank you for the message, but I'm asking you to give us more than a message. Give us a manifestation of your presence. Show yourself in here and without fail, we'll give you all the glory and honor and all of the praise. As a matter of fact, somebody's gonna give it to you in advance right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody open your mouth and just worship for one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Hallelujah, say something to him. Give him some glory. Give him some honor. Give him some praise. Jesus. Name, amen, and amen. On your way down, just hit somebody on both sides and tell him it's sovereign secrets. Sovereign. Sovereign secrets. Sovereign secrets. It was the psalmist David who said, Thou will show me the path of life. And in thy presence there is fullness of joy. David is telling us that if you want to know the path of life or if you want to know the purpose of God, we've talked about that a lot tonight, sang about it. If you want to know the purpose of God or the path of life that God has for you, he's telling us that we must access the presence of God. And the greatest way to access the presence of God is to access him through your worship. It really does matter how you come to the house of the Lord. He said, I want you to enter my gates with thanksgiving, and then I want you to come before my courts with praise. A lot of people are trying to come before the courts with praise, but you've never really entered the gates with thanksgiving. So every time your foot crosses the threshold, you need to find something to tell God thank you for. Lord, I thank you that I made it. I'm just thankful for the strength that you've given me. And because real worship is a progression, it takes you, it takes you somewhere. It is a process. And he, he, he said if you're going to access the presence of the Lord, the best way to do that is to do it through worship. And real worship, it, it, it doesn't begin uh, in the church house. Real worship begins in your heart. I said real worship begins in any worshipers in here tonight, you know what I mean? I mean, it'll, it'll happen in your house before you ever leave for church, you know? It'll, it'll happen before you ever get out of the bed in the morning, you know? Lots of times I roll over in the middle of the night and say, Lord, I just thank you. I just... I just worship you and I pray. Half awake, half asleep, but I've tapped into, I've tapped in, you, you know, because worship doesn't start at seven o'clock when church starts. Worship is the order of heaven and it goes on 24 seven. So if you ever roll over in the middle of the night, half awake, half asleep and just feel the glory, it's cause you tapped into a worship service already in progress. <laughs> Real worship doesn't begin in the church. Real worship begins in the heart. And the Bible says when your heart becomes full, then out of the abundance of the heart, 
the mouth speaketh. And the more that you talk to him, the more access that he grants you. That's why you got to open your mouth. Touch somebody and tell him, open your mouth, open your mouth. Because the more you open your mouth, the more God will talk to you. And, and the more you talk to him, the more he will talk to you. So the more you talk to him, the more access that he grants you. And, 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 and the, the more that you are in his presence, the more you find yourself wanting to be in his presence. And, and unfortunately, after we have experienced and embraced God in a real intimate way, if you do that three or four or five or 10 or 15 times, you usually come to the point where you start enduring and you start tolerating just church. You know what I'm saying? Just sometimes, now don't get me wrong, y'all, y'all, y'all are scared. I, I'm talking about quote unquote church, okay? Uh, I, I, it's not that I don't love church because I love church. I really I really love the church. I am the church. I, I, it's all I've ever known is the church, okay? Uh, when I was coming up, all you could ever do was go to church because everything else was a sin. So church is all I know. Okay, so I love it. As a matter of fact, the other day when I was going to church, I looked out and my neighbors were walking their dogs. Some of them were pulling boats down to the lake. Uh, other, other neighbors were just running and jogging and, and riding their bicycles. And I'm, I'm on my way to church and I'm having this conversation with, with these people like, what in the world's wrong with y'all? Why are y'all not going to church? I mean, if this was me, if, if it was me walking a dog on Sunday morning, he would kill me, okay? He would just... Sh 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 Honest, he would. I love the church. It's not that I don't love the church, but I have found oft time, often times that in the middle of what I love, I have found that something is missing. And after you've encountered a real presence of God, and after you've embraced a real manifestation of the power of God, you are no longer content just to, to be in a church that teases you. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 don't, don't tease me, okay? Don't, don't flirt with me. Don't act like you are going to let me go into the presence. And, and, and when I'm open and when I'm vulnerable, then you grab the microphone and do something stupid. You don't know what it took for me to get that open and, and to get that vulnerable. Don't be doing stupid stuff. Once, once you have ever experienced God and the manifest presence of God, especially through worship, once you have been there and you've experienced that, you are no, see, there are some levels that you go to in God that you will never, ever, ever be able to go back. And, and it's, it's kind of, it kind of makes people that are around you, like they don't know what to do with you, you know, because they went to church with you all your life. But now you're like, you're like not content anymore. And, and, you're, and, and, and they're like, well, what's your problem? I mean, you've been to this church all your life. I mean, how come now this ain't enough for you? What's up with that? What's, what, why you got to be a troublemaker? Why don't you just, why don't you just, just shut up? Just don't, what's wrong with you? And you're like, look, I'm not trying to be a troublemaker, okay? I, I, I'm not trying to be deep. I'm not trying to be spiritual. I'm not trying to be better than anybody else. I'm not trying to be difficult. But I am thirsty, okay? I am thirsty. I have tasted and I've seen that the Lord is good and if you ever get a big enough taste it will give you the courage to break loose of your tradition and run after your thirst and if you ever tap into that if he, I, I'm telling you, God can expose you to dimensions of himself that, are, that you never knew existed before. And because of that, you will not be able to live like you have always lived. I mean, it was okay before I knew it. But now that I know that it exists, now that I've tasted it, now that I've embraced it, now that I've had it, I can't live without it. Tell your neighbor, I gotta have more. I gotta have. 
And when you finally realize that your life is dependent upon His presence, you become real passionate about your pursuit of Him. And when you are left at the mercies of people who are passionless, when you are left at the mercies of people who are logic, logical thinkers, uh, you know, that, 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 that everything's got to be logical, then that, that messes you up. It, it makes you frustrated and it makes you vulnerable because real passion, it knows absolutely zero logic. See, worship is no place for logical people, okay? There really is no place for logical people in worship. Maybe in praise, but not in worship. See, see it, it, Mary would have never broke open her alabaster box had she been a logical person. Because logic was talking to her. Logic was saying, girl, you, can, you know you cannot afford this. This is spikenard. This is rare. It is scarce. What do you mean? You can't waste spikenard. You, and besides all that, you are a woman. And you were not even invited into to this meeting. If you go in there breaking open that alabaster box, if you go in there with that kind of praise, you get ready to wreck that meeting. Ooh, but see, real praise will wreck a meeting. I said real praise. It will straight up wreck. Because while you are sitting up You'll be like, okay, while well, you're sitting up looking uh, wonderful, half asleep and all that, acting like you just deserve to be in his presence, I got to go ahead and give him a praise because I understand I wasn't worthy, okay? Maybe you were worthy. I wasn't worthy. I know if it wouldn't have been for the mercies of God, I wouldn't even be standing here. I know for me, it was nothing but the blood. It was nothing, nothing, nothing. So you go ahead and be logical. I'm going to be thankful. Hit somebody and tell them, I can't help but be thankful. He walks with me. And he talks with me. He opens doors for me. He defends me. He is my exceeding great reward. He shields me. He's a shepherd for me. He's a strong tower. In the middle of the night, he's my song. I love him for things like that. I love him because he acclimated me to go through stuff I should have never been able to go through. Have you ever been through anything and got out on the other side and you look back over your shoulder and said, Somebody praise him right now. He picked my life up. He mended my heart. He held my mind together when all hell was pulling it apart. And it was not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. He walked me through every valley in life. When I reached for him, he was always... I tell you, real worship, real worship knows no logic. So when logic says, when logic says I can't afford it, <laughs> passion says, are you kidding me? This is my life, okay? Worship is what grants me access to him. And after I get in him, I can live. I can't live apart from his presence. Like an ocean needs water. Like a ship needs a sail. Like a kite needs the wind. I need him. It might be optional for you, but he is not optional for me. In him I live. and In him I move. and In him I have my pain. To deny me of him is to deny me of life because my existence is totally dependent. That's why as a deer panteth for the water brook, so panteth. Oh, and I love God because after you walk with him a minute, he'll show you how to get to the brook all by yourself. Ooh, I know how to get myself in, okay? I thank God for the praise team. I'm, I'm part of the praise team. But at the end of the day, if ain't nobody there, I can stand up and praise myself right into God's... Don't you mess with me. That's the dear Pentecost. 
after the water brook, so planted my soul after the oak. One thing have I desired, and that will I seek after. It's you, God. It is you that I'm after. I don't need a man to make me successful. I need God's presence. I don't need a prestigious title. I need his presence. I don't need a luxurious house. I need his presence. My title, my house, my car, my bank account, that is not what makes me successful. It is standing in his presence that makes me succeed. And that's why I worship like I... I am after God. I am after everything that he has for me. And I don't even know what that is. All I know is like Paul, oh, that I might apprehend that which I have been apprehended of. I, I don't even know what it is. All I know is that something is drawing me and something is pulling me. In the middle of the night, I can't even sleep. I find myself walking the floor. I'm waking up like, what is it, God? What? I don't even know. If I knew what I was after, then I would know if I got it. But, but if you don't know what it is that you're after, you're, you're just moving by faith and you're, you're reaching by faith. Kind of like Abraham, you know. Abraham, he went looking for something. He didn't even know what he was looking for. All he heard was God say, get thee out of thy country, away from thy kindred, away from thy father's to a land that I will show you. I'm not showing you right now. You get to step in and then I'll get to show it. But you got to step first and then I'll show you. I am in pursuit of that thing. I try to lay hold of it in every praise service. I try to lay hold of it in every worship service. And you can roll your eyes at me all, while, all night long because I ain't studying about you and your eyes, okay? I ain't studying about you and your eye rolling self. I don't even see your eyes rolling because the Lord has been a shield for me. Put your neighbor, tell him I'm after something. I'm after, I'm after something. And no, it is not you, okay? I am not after you. I didn't leave my kids. I didn't leave my husband. I didn't leave my laundry. I didn't leave my dishes just so that I could press my way into the potter's house and fight all of that traffic. You think I fought all that traffic just so I could sit up in here and look at you and what you got on? Have you lost your mind? No, I need something from God, and you can't give that to me. I am after my purpose. I'm after my assignment. Destiny is pulling me like gravity. Somebody, tell them that's what destiny feels like. It pulls you. Y'all ain't pulling up. Pull up, pull, pull, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Destiny. <laughs> Woo! Pulling me. It pulled you out of sin. It pulled you out of the club. It pulled you out of an adulterous affair. Destiny. He has visited me. He has visited me. And he has left me pregnant. Pregnant with hope and pregnant with potential. Oh, I'm so pregnant with potential. I am so pregnant. I tell somebody, tell them I'm pregnant, okay? I am, I am, I'm pregnant. That's all I can think about. When I lay down at night, I lay there on the bed and tears rolling down my face. I can't really define it, but I'm pregnant with it, you know? I just know that I know that I know. And so I lay in my bed and I think about it. I cry about it and I pray about it. I talk about it, I, I write about it. And though the vision tarry, I will wait for it and I will worship for it and I will run for it. With or without you, I will run for it. It. Whether you keep up or not, I got to run for it. My soul follows hard after God. If I seek him, he will be found. Of it's my destiny. It's what I was born for. It's who I am. It's what I do. And if I don't run, if I don't worship, if I don't run and if I don't worship, if I don't worship and if I don't run, I will lose my mind. I will crumble from the weight of weariness. Worship is therapy to me. I said it is therapy to me. If I don't worship, I'll be beat to death by boredom. If I don't worship, I'm going to explode from the pressure. So I got to run after him. All because he holds the keys to my life. He has the answer to all of my problems. It is him. He is to me what the conductor is to the orchestra. He has the ability 
need to go wave his hand and bring all of my craziness together and make it sound like music. But when he gets through working this situation and then this situation and, and he takes that problem and he takes that, that circumstance and he starts harmonizing them all together. He starts blending them and merging them. Ooh, and, and when he does, all things work together. Not some things, not part of the things, but everything, even the ugly things, even, even the bad things. I don't care what it was. I don't care how bad it was. I don't care what they said. I don't care how they, evil they meant it. When God gets through working, working everything together in your life. It is going to be good because God is good and he's good all the time. Tell somebody it's all good, it's all good. When you allow him, when you allow him to stand center stage of your life and call you into order, all of the disconnected pieces of your life's orchestra will come together. And all of the craziness, the madness, the stuff that's out of your control, stuff like you, you feel like you can't finish and you, you can't seize and you just can't bring it together. All of a sudden, all over, from everywhere, everything begins to come together. But can I tell you tonight, you'll never, ever, ever Hear the harmony of life apart from the conductor. The conductor has the power. I said the conductor has, only God, only God has the ability to help you to understand what your eternal purpose was in your life before the foundations of the world were ever laid. Only God knows that. It's not in a man, it's not in a woman, it's not even in a preacher. Only God has the keys to the secrets of your success. That is why I worship him, because in my moments of my intense worship, he starts revealing to me the mystery of his will for my life. In the heat, in the heat, in the heat, listen to me, in the heat, in the heat of intense, intense worship. <laughs> Everybody look this way, right here, right here. <laughs> In the heat of intense, this is why it's important, church. This is why you can't limit worship to just a slow song service. It's why you can't just skip it and come in 45 minutes late just to be here for the preaching. Y'all don't like me. I don't like y'all either. Ha ha. I ain't scared of you either. I'm from Detroit. I'll take you out in a minute. People wonder why we worship. Do you understand that when we tap into real worship, divine intelligence it's like divine intelligence it's divine information it begins to transfer into your spirit and though I got some of it this morning I didn't get all of it because God gives it to us in increments having made known unto us the mystery the unknown part of his will the hidden part of his will do you understand when God gives you uh, uh, your destiny your purpose and when he talks to you he doesn't give you everything at the same time he gives you a little bit here, and he gives you a little bit there. He gives you a little information over here, and a little bit of information over there. And he doesn't give it to you all at one time. Because he give, if he gave it to you all at one time, y'all know we would mess it up. Okay, let me take you through the Old Testament really quickly so you can understand what I'm saying. When the enemy got ready to destroy man... He did it all at one time. Through one man, Adam, Adam fell, and everything that was in Adam fell with Adam. Touch your neighbor, tell him you fell too, okay? So get that holy look <laughs> off your face, you fell too. And he did it all at one time. 
But when God got ready to redeem us from that fall, he had a plan, and that plan was already settled in the heavens. And, and you know how I know that? It's because the Bible said that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world began. Now, he didn't tell it. He, he, he had the plan all along, but he didn't tell it the whole plan at one time. He released it to us in increments. The first thing he told us, he said, okay, now, in order to get this thing turned around, he said, an animal has got to die. But he didn't tell us what kind of animal. He said, we're going to take an animal, we're going to kill him, and we're going to take the coats of his skin. And he did, and he covered Adam's nakedness. So we know that the animal had to die. And we, that's all we know. But two chapters later, he tells Abel, he said, Abel, offer up a lamb as a sacrifice. And he said, now I want you to offer up the firstling, not just any lamb, but the firstling. So now we know, tell somebody, think tonight, think, 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 think. Now we know what kind of animal it was, and we know what order it had to come in. It had to be a lamb, and it had to be a firstling. Well, a few, and that's all we know, but a few books later, he tells Moses, he said, Moses, take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost of every believer. So now, in order to fix Adam's mess, here's what we know. We know that an animal had to die. We know that it had to be a lamb. We know that he had to be a firstling. We know that the blood had to be applied to the doorpost, and that's all we know until a few books later. And in Leviticus, he says, take a male lamb and make sure he's spotless and make sure he has no blemish. Woo! So now we know that an animal has to die, that it's got to be a lamb, that it's the firstling, and that the blood has to be applied to the doorpost of the believer, and the lamb has got to be without spot and without blemish. And that is all we know until we step into Isaiah. And Isaiah says, he, 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 he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Behold, he goeth as a lamb to the shears. So now we know an animal has to die. It has to be a lamb, has to be a firstling. We know that the blood has to be applied to the doorpost. We know that the lamb has got to be without spot and without blemish. And now Isaiah has given us another increment because he tells us that the lamb is not just a lamb and the lamb is not just an animal, but he tells us that the lamb is a man. Do y'all see what I'm saying tonight? Now we know that he is a man. We don't know what man. We know that it is some man. That is until you step over into the New Testament and you hear John say, behold the That's awesome because John tells us that man, he defines which man it is. That man is the man that was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace is upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Tell somebody it's the increments of God. Now we know he's the first thing. We know he's a male lamb. We know that he doesn't have spot or blemish. We know that his blood has to be applied to the doorpost of the believer. We know he is a sacrificial lamb. We know that he is our coats of skin. We know that he is our righteousness, and I am complete in him, and that my life is hid in Christ with God, and in him I live and move and have my being. All of a sudden, we know the entire plan, but he didn't give it to us all at once. He gave it in increments. Now, if you understand that, then you've got to understand that there are some things about your life that are mysteries. There are things that have went on in your life that God has not revealed yet. There, there's some things that he hasn't explained to you yet. But the Bible says that as we follow on to know the Lord, that we're going to know him. The more that we follow, the more that we are going to know. And so as you progressively begin to walk with the Lord, then all of a sudden as you walk with him, you'll just be walking and all of a sudden it'll hit you and you'll be like, oh, 
That's why I had to go through that. was a only child. That's why I was a lonely child. Because you were trying to prepare me so that when I got older and people cut me out of their circle, it was going to be okay with me. Because I know what it's like to be by myself. You were just getting me ready for what you had in And all of a sudden, little by little, line upon line, there is an unveiling of the secrets of God. And as he does it, you start understanding that you had to go through what you went through. Because if you wouldn't have went through what you've been through, you would never become who you are. And so now we start understanding that God uses your mistakes and he uses your faults and he uses your failures to help you help other people when they are going through their faults and their failures and their mistakes. You start understanding that the reason I had to go through that, God, you were just giving me a testimony so that when I go to work on Monday and my coworker says, I don't know, my heart is overwhelmed, I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm I'm gonna look at her and say, baby, come here, let me tell you something. I'm telling you the God I serve, he brought me out of that, and he brought me out of that, and he brought me out of that, and if he can bring me out of that, ooh, he's gonna bring you out too, and faith cometh by hearing. <laughs> Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, it is in those moments of intense worship. Who oh, hear me? It's those moments of intense worship that God introduces who he really is to you on a first name basis. Hey God, hey Cheryl, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Ooh, and it, when he introduces himself to you, you start knowing him. He moves from being your mama's God or your pastor's God or your best friend's God, and he becomes your God. Oh, and can I tell you, knowing God is so vital because you will never know you until you know him. The more you walk with him and talk with him, the more he talks to you and he tells you, you are this. Cheryl, you're a worshiper. I'm gonna use your life. I've given you the gift of joy. I've given you healing in your hands. And you're standing in his presence and tears are rolling down your face. And the more you talk to him, the more he talks to you. Ooh, and the more you compliment him, the more he comes and steps into the middle of your compliments. Ooh, and he makes his abode in you. And whenever he makes his abode in you, or whenever he starts moving inside of you, you know him. How in the world do you think that you can become pregnant with the promises of God without Without knowing him, without opening up and letting down your card and not worrying about who's next to you and not worrying about who hears you and not worrying about who's looking at you cry. I am telling you, you got to open up and let him in, let him in. You got to let him, you got to let him. You got to let him in. It is not Christ around you that is the hope of glory. It is Christ in you that's the... And if he ever gets in you and develops a relationship with you, if he ever gets down inside of you, he will reproduce his character and his nature. It'll all start flowing in you. And you can stand boldly and proclaim, I know him, I know him. And if you don't know algebra, and if you don't know geometry, and if you don't know President Barack Obama, if you don't even know Bishop Jakes, oh, you're going to still be all right. But tell somebody, you got to know him. You, you got to know him. He's the one that knows the secrets. He knows what he put in you before he kicked you out of eternity and put your feet into time. He put stuff in you, and it is the mystery of his will. Paul didn't say that we learn the mystery of his will. He said he has made known to us because if you could learn it, 
then that would suggest that you could obtain it through a level of intellectualism which could possibly give people that are more intelligent than us an advantage and that would not be fair and that would not be God so Paul said no he makes it known unto you you don't learn it he just makes it known what are you talking about have you ever been about to stress out and you don't know what to do and all of a sudden you're like that's exactly what I'm gonna do y'all ever done that I mean, you're stressing out. You're like, oh, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. There's no way in the world. And all of a sudden, you just know. Ooh, that's how. He, you just know. Just like that. All of a sudden, he lets you know things that you shouldn't know. And you don't understand it. And you can't explain it. But all you know is that as I worship him, he makes things known unto me. As I worship him, he transfers divine information into my spirit. And he doesn't do it all at once. He does it little by little by little. And so the more I worship, the more I begin to understand. Can I tell you, I'm almost finished. The difference between the saint and the sinner, it ain't nothing but what you know. The difference between the wise and the ignorant, it ain't nothing but what you know. The difference between the rich man and the poor man, it ain't nothing but what you know. So the enemy will go to any length to stop you from knowing. Because if he can stop you from knowing, he can limit your position in life. I'm telling you, if you don't know who you are, I dare you to worship. If you don't know what you can do, I dare you to worship. And the fastest way into the presence of God is talking your way in there. Open up your mouth and talk. Talk to him. I didn't know. I didn't know if you would have ever told me that I would have been talking to this many people. I would have just told you, you are a liar straight from hell. You know why? Because I didn't know. I didn't know what I could do. I was quiet, I was shy. Oh, y'all like, yeah, right, I'm telling you. That ain't right, y'all should not have done that right there. I'm telling you, I'm still quiet and I'm still shy except when I'm right here. I didn't know. All, all I knew was I was a worshiper. I wasn't an only child. My sister's here tonight. I wasn't an only child. I had, I, there was five of us. But I was, I was the, the last one. I was the baby. So I was not an, uh, an only child, but I was a lonely child. Because they were all grown and gone by the time I came along. So I... I really developed a relationship with God at such an early age because he was all I had to talk to because my daddy died when I was 12 and my mama had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go to work and so she would go to bed and it would still be daylight outside. That's totally depressing, especially to a child. So I would remember just sitting downstairs on the couch and I'd just be talking to him. And I'd start telling him who he was. I didn't know a whole lot, but I knew he was God. And I knew he was able. And I knew he was faithful. So I'd be saying, you're worthy and you're able and you're faithful. So I, I, I was just a worshiper. That's all I ever thought I was going to be. And we developed, I mean, we developed a tight relationship. I was his girl. I don't know about none of y'all, but 
Woo, y'all thought he was at your house. He was at my house. Because I knew how to entertain him, you know. My name ain't Rahab, but I knew how to entertain the Lord. I would talk to him. I would sing to him. And, and then, I, then I began thinking about David. David reminded me of me. You know, he went through a lot of rejection. You know, can I tell you, if you ever see a real worshiper, you got to know that that's somebody that went through a lot of rejection because it is our rejection that makes us run after him because we know he's not going to reject us. Oh, that's a safe place. <laughs> and so we, we were tight, and then I went to church, and somebody said, um, Cheryl, we would like you to lead us in worship. I was so upset about that because I was, I was scared. I didn't want to talk. I didn't want to sing. I was even mad at God. I was like, why did you tell them about us? What's up with that? You're supposed to be a secret keeper. You don't put our business in the street. Well, I started leading people in worship. And I didn't realize that while I was leading them in worship, that what, happened, what had happened is God had reached into a little girl and pulled out a worshiper. Then he reached into the, the worshiper and he pulled out a worship leader. It's the increments of God. And then a little bit later, he let me run head on into this man right here. Okay. Woo. And the more he preached, I was like, I can do that. I can do that. I, and, and, and the other voice is saying, are you crazy? You know you can't do that. All of a sudden, I started preaching because God reached into the little girl that he pulled out of the dirt and he pulled out worship out of her and then he reached into the woman that he pulled worship, her out, a worship out of and he pulled out a worship leader and then he reached into the worship leader and he pulled out a, pass, a, 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 a preacher and the next thing I know, he's pulled a pastor out of the little girl that he pulled out of the dirt, that he pulled out of worship, that he pulled out of the worship. I wonder what's in you. I wonder what is in you tonight that you don't even know is there. That's why you're in this conference, because you're pregnant with all kinds of potential. You got all kinds of capacity inside of you, but you don't know it yet. Some of you do, some of you don't. But just when you think you know it all, ooh, it's like the brooding of the Lord. He sat on the earth for the purpose of hatching what was in the earth. So he sits on us because we are earth. And he broods over us until he brings. How do you know there's anything in us? Because the Bible said we have this treasure. It is in earthen vessels. The problem is I've got treasure, but it's locked up in an earthen vessel. And as he sits on my earthen vessel, as you give him permission to sit on you, sit on me today, God. Sit on my attitude. Sit on my temper. Sit on my carnality. Sit on me, Jesus, until you bring out everything in me that needs to be brought out. I'm telling you, I tell you all that to tell you that as I told him who he was, he started telling me who I was. He released sovereign secrets. And no man told them to me, which means no man could take them away from me. God told me. So I would throw up my hands and worship has been my default all of my life. When I couldn't cope with anything, I'd just say, Lord, I praise you. I give you glory. Don't know where to go or what to do. But I'll talk to you till you talk to me. 
70 days, better known as 18 years. She was bowled completely over with the spirit of infirmity for 6,570 days. But she was faithful to the house of God. Can you imagine? I mean, we can't hardly get here on time and we all straight and fine. And Six thousand five hundred and seventy days. She went, this woman <laughs> taught us something about a passive praise. I know all about the kind of praise that is crazy and, you know, like blind Bartimaeus. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I know about that. I know about the kind of praise that the woman with the issue of blood had. You know, the one that's the, 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 the thing that made her leave her house and run for the border of his garment. Because when you're in real trouble, you better run for the border. I know about those passionate, praising people. But this woman had been coming for 6,570 days. Can you imagine what it took for her to get there? Her presence in the building was a testimony all by itself. Before she ever waved her hand, before she ever said, Lord, I thank you, her presence was a testimony. She got there and she knelt down. She sat in a seat. All the young folk praising, glorifying God. She just sat there. She said, Lord, I'm so glad to be in your presence one more time. I wish I had the strength that these young folk have. I wish I had the ability to stand up straight like they do, but it's okay, God. I'm here. You knew I was going to be here, didn't you? <laughs> Woo! I'm here. She didn't do any jumping. She didn't do any hollering. She just came in and manned her post. Said, Phew. I'm here, Lord. Touch me if you will, because I know you're able. I know you're able. But if you don't touch me, I still know you're able. Lord, if you never make it better for me, I'm still going to enter your gates with thanksgiving. And I'm going to come before your courts with praise. <laughs> if you never straighten me out, if I never get out of this apartment, if I, if I never have a husband, if I never get out of this debt, Lord, if, you, if it never changes for me, I done made up my mind, I'm going to give you the glory. Six thousand. 570 days. Who touch somebody and tell them today is your day. And the Bible said, in spite of everybody in the room, he saw her. And he called her. That's those moments of worship when you feel him calling you. Woo, you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. 
He called her. He saw her. He called her. And then it never, ever, ever says that he healed her. You know what it says? He said to her, Woman. He's about to tell you something about yourself that you do not know, woman. Never, ever, ever does it say that he healed her. Just that he saw her, that he called her, and that he said something to her. He told her a secret that she didn't know. For 18 years, 6,570 days, she did not know that she was loose. Woman, thou art, art, loosed. Art. Art. That's right now. Somebody say right now. Yeah. Loosed. loosed. But see, that's past tense. So he's talking about right now and past tense. I'm confused, aren't you? I mean, it sounds like a contradiction. Art. Loosed. It's not really a contradiction. You know what he was saying to her? He was saying, hey, hey, you're about to come into something that I did for you a long time ago. Somebody praise him. Woo! Woman thou art. Well, hold up. Hold up, because you know, I would have had to argue probably, maybe not, but I would have been like, are you, what are you telling me? Are you telling me that for 6,570 days that I have been bent out of shape? Are you telling me that I've been twisted and I didn't have to be twisted? Are you telling me that I got all these issues and I really didn't have to have all these issues? Are you, are you telling me that it's just that simple? Are, are you telling me, are you, are you telling me that I, I'm not really, I don't have to be addicted to crack? Are, are you telling me, are you telling me that I don't have to be abused? Are, are you telling me that the chains and the handcuffs are falling off of me, right? Are you telling me that I can get out of this anytime I get ready to get out? And the Bible says, She, she, who could in no wise, there wasn't no way in the world, that's what that means, wasn't no way in the world, that she could lift up herself. Have you ever found yourself in stuff that you know there wasn't no way in the world that you could get out of it by yourself? She who could have known us, lift up herself. Immediately, somebody snap your finger. Immediately, she was made straight. And she glorified God. Woo! I want you to grab your sister. And I want you to tell her, say, you can straighten up. Anytime you get ready. You ain't got to be twisted. You ain't got to be bitter. You ain't got to be depressed. You ain't got to be wounded. You ain't got to be weak. Straighten up. Woo! Just like that, he told her a sovereign secret, and she worshiped. There's some women in this room tonight. You say, Pastor Brady, I am twisted. I got some issues and I want to straighten up. And I want you to run out of your seat right now and fall 
fall into this altar. Just fall, just fall, just fall, just fall. Fall and worship. Don't worry about what you did. Don't worry about who you did it with. Just fall. He's going to talk you out of it. He's going to talk you out of depression. He's going to talk you out of sickness. He's going to talk you out of low self-esteem. Come, come, come. an effort. Run to the altar. Run. Run. He's got some secrets. I would love this channel to be an over-the-top platform, getting a play button, of course, and reaching a wider audience. And my aim is to point people back to God because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We are in the last and evil days. Let's keep our ears open. In conclusion, I need your help. Your seed is important whether you're new to this channel or not. Liking the next video that I upload on any platform underneath Catch My Praise. Giving credit to where you get your sources also helps. Your generous gifts of any amount are welcome. Catch Up is always open under Catch My Praise. Why am I doing this? because it takes a lot to do a lot. Thank you for listening. Until then, believe it, reach it, catch it, here only on the Catch My Praise Network.